as Rupert's episode tonight shows, even normal sense data then achieves a kind of multidimensionality, a richness rather impossible to describe. This automatically provides a biological learning process in which the senses can be used in a freer, deeper fashion. While such occurrences are not constant, they are frequent enough so that ordinary experience is changed. The richness overlaps. You do not have to know anything about so-called psychic matters necessarily. Many individuals use the spacious mind and its perceptions, taking it for granted without realizing how different their own perception is from that of others. Rupert wondered about this next matter, which is related. Physiologically, you carry within yourselves remnants of your evolution in your terms, physical vestiges of organs and other attributes long discarded. In the same way, you also carry within you structures not yet fully used. Those organizations point, in your terms, toward future evolution. Use of the spacious mind involves these. Individuals through all the ages have experienced this kind of awareness, though never to its fullest form. Experience with the spacious mind dissolves any seeming conflicts that occur between the intellect and the intuitions at other levels. To whatever extent possible, the physical organism interprets that unity through a new mixture of sense data, so that materially the information makes sense. An individual can tune into spacious mind operation two or three times in a lifetime without realizing it, and have experiences that he finds difficult to interpret later. The affirmation involved is one of transcendence, in which for a time a person affirms his reality in flesh and at the same time states his independence from it and realizes that both of these conditions exist simultaneously. A dual perception takes place in which the spacious mind is activated. By activated I mean that the physical organism is suddenly aware of the spacious mind's existence. Now, when utilized properly and fully in your terms of time, the spacious mind will vastly enrich the dimensions of the species, bringing the body into a greater harmony than now possible. On a neurological basis, there are unreleased latent triggers that can be set off, and when they are, your practical experience with time as you know it will be altered. From your viewpoint, the species will then be so different that it will seem to be another one entirely. As Rupert once suggested, your modern system of communications has already expanded the data available to a private conscious mind in a given amount of time, and this on a purely physical level. You have to handle and assimilate information now available as to happenings in other places that in previous centuries no ordinary individual would have been aware of. Events in distant places then become present knowledge. Time intervals between an episode and your knowledge of it are shortened though the event may occur on the other side of the world. Jet travel scrambles your idea and experience of time, and in so doing, alters your concepts of it. But within the mechanisms of the body, there are unused and unrecognized triggers that will allow you, as a species, to consciously handle greater perceptions of time, just as you now handle greater perceptions of space. In a very limited and fumbling manner, this is hinted at through the use of computers, where you try to assess quote-unquote future probabilities and act accordingly in your present. The mind can do this far better than any computer. If it believed this, then certain portions of the brain would be activated. The brain would become aware of more of the mind's knowledge and the probabilities of future events would be made consciously available. Now, the brain would have to sort out this information so that the physically attuned mechanism was clearly able to maintain its temporal present. When man first developed the pause of reflection, as mentioned earlier in this book, he did undergo initial disorientation before he learned to distinguish a vividly remembered event of the past from a presently experienced one. The growing consciousness had to make such distinctions for practical behavior. To utilize future probable events, the physical brain would be forced to enlarge its function while keeping the individual in clear relationship with the present moment of power or corporeal effectiveness. Affirmation always involves the acknowledgement of your power in the present. In greater terms, denial is the surrendering of that power. 
Affirmation, then, is the acquiescence to your ability, as a spirit within flesh, to form the physical reality of your creaturehood. Now, you can alter your present through altering your past, or you can change your present from the future. Even these manipulations must take place in your practical, experienced present, however. Many people have, at one time or another, changed their present behavior in response to the advice of a quote-unquote future probable self without ever knowing they have done so. Suppose you have a particular goal in mind as a youngster toward which you work. Your intense images, desires, and determination form a psychic force that is projected out ahead of you, so to speak. You send the reality of yourself from your present into what you think of as the future. Now, Say that at a certain stage you have some decisions to make and do not know which way to turn. You may sense that you are in danger of swerving from your purpose, yet for other reasons feel strongly inclined to do so. In a dream or in daydreaming, you may suddenly hear a voice, mentally, that tells you in no uncertain terms to go ahead with your initial intent. Or in some other way, you may receive the same information through an urge or a vision or simply by suddenly knowing what to do. This happens in your present. In other terms, the self that you have projected into the future is sending you back encouragement from a probable reality that you can still create. That focused self operates from its present, however, and someday in your own future, you may find yourself thinking nostalgically of a moment back in your own past when you were indecisive and irresolute, but took the proper course. You may think, I am glad I did that, or, knowing what I know now, how lucky I am that I made that decision. And in that moment, you are the future self that quote-unquote once spoke encouragingly to the person of the past. The probable future has caught up with the practical present. The early affirmation of yourself projected into the future made such an incident possible. In the same way, your acceptance of yourself and your own integrity can, at any moment in your present, alter your past and future. End of chapter.